I believe, live now in our Norwich studio. Thank you. Well, well, good hello, Nedwin. Good hello to you all. Um, I don't wish to seem prudish, but I do most sincerely hope that you're all suffering from some kind of horrible dyspepsia this morning. Uh, it's not because I think you should be condemned for making beasts of yourself at the table, though no doubt you should, but because I'm feeling uh, malevolently disposed to you in general. So some of the more admiring listeners to my occasional wireless essays may have noticed that I've been away from the programme in recent weeks. Uh, thank you for the flowers and presents, those of you who assumed that it was some illness that kept me from you. Uh, in particular, my thanks go to Nigel Andrew of Marylebone for the magnificent gift of the dilator. In fact, it was no physical indisposition that absented me, uh, rather, shall we say, a spiritual one. I won't go into the details of the state of mind that haunted me. Let's just say that I couldn't be bothered. Uh, I could, however, be bothered to listen. And while radio criticism is no part of my remit here, it might at this time be salutary for you all, listeners and contributors alike, to hear my views of this, this, this loose ends. Uh, for you, the listeners, uh, I have much sympathy. Uh, you're trapped in your car on your way to some drinks party, you're just rising from a flatulent night of gluttony, you're wallowing in your bath like a beached manatee. It will be too much effort to turn the wireless off. And so you listen in a kind of glazed, unbelieving fashion. But for you contributors, I have less sympathy. Uh, you're young, most of you, though not half so young as you would have the world believe. Uh, you're smart, intelligent, in a snappy, facile way. Oh, there are a grillion better things for you to be doing than to giggle and simper cockily around a table. For I have to say, Nedwin, gravely and with the deepest of deep, deep respects, uh, that this loose ends, it really won't do at all. Oh, no, no, not do at all. Um, I sense already a, a drawing in of breath and an aggrieved and embarrassed slapping together of buttocks in Studio B13. Has Donald run staring mad? Is he to savage the hand that strokes him? Does he imagine that he will earn an easy brownie badge from the listening thousands by, by seeming to stage a, a kind of verbal dirty protest in the very cell which offers him weekly warmth and shelter? Whom, in short, uh, is he trying to fool? In the warm broadcasting world of self-congratulation, does he fancy that self-flagellation will do anything but disgust? Well, I must confess that it is the narrowest of tightropes I'm treading here, but I believe it's time, as the year ends, for us all to take stock and wonder at what we have given the world this last 12 months. Like Piers, the honest ploughman, we must surely contrive to do well, do bet, do best. Uh, earnestness is no part of my message, please believe me, nor sanctimony. Uh, all we can offer the audience are words. We have no other weapons nor no other love tokens. Let us then be careful with them before we discharge them into the atmosphere. Let's be careful they do not pollute like the hazy mists of aerosols and in polluting return to burn us all to bits. Is the world happier now than it was 12 months ago? I rather fear that it is not. Then what have we been doing? What have we been doing? My Christmas message then is simply this. I'm sorry, so dreadfully sorry. I do hope that your messages, speakers and listeners all, are the same. Oh dear, so uncheery. I cannot leave you like that. How dare I? So let me say this to happy you up. I have a boil on my bottom. It means I have to sit on a toroid cushion, a kind of capoc filled doughnut. My buttock masseur, you remember him, he's the one who leaves no stern untoned. He tells me that I've been eating too much chocolate. Well, perhaps if I sit on a bowl of sugar, I will develop toothache. Strange, isn't it? England is full of people who drink incessantly, eat like pigs, and walk about with bottoms as healthy as hay. If you have been, do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> would you, uh, Stephen, would you help uh, Dr. Trefuses out of the studio? Uh, just pop the, you know, the coat and the, the wrap around him, and uh, then I'd like to have a word with you. Yes, I'll do that. He's already fallen asleep, actually. Oh, <laughs> he uh, always falls asleep straight after delivering his messages. <laughs> <laughs> so can the old fool not hear at all? No, no, he's, he's, he's quite out to the world, I'm right. afraid. Uh, are you giving him a crust over the festive? Yes, well, a crusty port. That's what he likes. A little <laughs> port with a little bee's wing. We've uh, we heard earlier in the programme that you've been um, that you're up there really mainly to comfort a lot of bereaved Norfolk turkeys. Is this true? That's right. I'm striding Bernard Matthews' honest acres and uh, trying to set free as many as I can. Uh, a free turkey is not a happy turkey. With, with great um, respect to Mr. <laughs> Mr. Echevit in Ankara, um, <laughs> but, uh, it's uh, no, it, they're they're fine actually. They're very happy in their little broiler houses. It's been very very charming of you to drive through the wastes of Norfolk, Stephen. Oh, it's been in entirely your pleasure. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, au revoir and au revoir to the old boy. Goodbye, my dears. Bye-bye. I love you all. <laughs> <laughs>